Hi, and welcome back. My name is Tony with Boat McGrill. This week we will start the uh, fiberglassing of the parts for the Raider stand. And if you are a boat owner and think about doing your first boat renovation and want to learn more or get inspiration, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Before we start the work, I just want to send a little late Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope it's been just as good to you as it's been to me. And since it's just a few days left until New Year's, I want to wish you all a Happy New Year. And later in this episode, I will tell you a little bit about what's going to happen here on the channel during 2020. So hang on. My idea of how to dress this in fiberglass is to first start out with two layers of biaxial 300 gram weave saturated with polyester resin. The reason to this is that I decided to coat the whole assembly later on with top coat. It's known, as some of you know, that top coat or gel coat doesn't bond well to epoxy and I don't want to risk any future problem when it's mounted on the boat. I didn't want to bore you too much so this time I spared you a lot of the pre-work that I did inside the racer to the Raider stand. I did some sanding, uh, as you can see here. Uh, did sand out with my Dremel and then so that the internal cable channel is now smooth. Uh, and we'll, I will coat this with a layer of, of uh, epoxy resin so it will be easier for the cables to go in here. The racer needs to be assembled since it's up to now has been in two halves or two parts. I will assemble them but by uh, first put a coat of epoxy resin on the edges in here and then let that soak into the wood, maybe wait an hour or so, then come back, put another layer of, of uh, epoxy resin and then finally put them together and clamp them together and let them stay there like that for a while. So first of all, we'll wipe this off with some acetone. Uh, that's always the practice to wipe everything off with acetone before you uh, start coating it with uh, epoxy. Uh, I'm using, I'm always using my, my mask, when, especially when uh, uh, using acetone, acetone in this kind of environment. It's closed in here and I don't have a really, really good uh, ventilation. I'm not going to mix a huge amount of resin this time, uh, most likely just 50 grams or even more, maybe 25 grams. I'm just going to coat this now, I don't want to have a lot of resin over that I can have to throw away. First thing I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna cut out a couple of pieces of uh, fiberglass, 300 grams by actual weave.
it's been at least uh, two hours or something. It took it a bit longer than I guessed. I had to go have uh, some uh, Christmas dinner with the family and stuff. But now when I came back, the uh, epoxy that I put in here is still a little bit tacky. It's not. Uh, it's still. It's when you when you touch it with your fingers, it gets. You, you can see your fingerprints still in the epoxy and that means that you can still put new layers on top of it so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna mix up a little bit, bit of ep epoxy and then i'm gonna coat the coat the surfaces so then i will put them together press them together with a couple of clamps and then just leave it as it is until they have uh, cured enough that it won't come apart again this time i'm just gonna mix up a very small batch Probably not more than 10 grams or something like that. I'm almost out of uh, epoxy resin at the moment. Uh, I have an order on the way. Uh, more about that in the next one or two movies uh, weeks ahead. I will talk a little bit more about the new brand. I've used Gurit from Ampro so far, but I will start trying another brand and see how that works. Uh, so I'm gonna be back about that. So now I'm gonna put this away and let this uh, cure. And next time when we come back to this part, it will be uh, cured and probably sit together as it's supposed to. The next thing I will start go working with is the shelf parts. They need to be fiberglassed and as you know, the edges are rounded on these ones. And I want to have fiberglass all over it. That's why I'm gonna start with a uh, 300 gram fiberglass layer cut into strips. The first strips are about five centimeters going around the edges and overlapping. And then a the second layer that is one to two centimeters thinner or, or narrower, I need to saturate the edges and the top part and let that sit for about an hour or something like that before I start to put on the strips. And when that strips are set down, I'm gonna put a two layers on top and let that cure. Then next time I come back here in a day or two, I'm gonna put two layers on the other side. And when that's done, I'm gonna cover everything with a, a layer of gel coat that I later on can sand down to a smooth surface. But let's first mix up some uh, polyester resin and saturate these surfaces. Uh, first, I'm gonna dry them off with a uh, tack rag, so get away all the dirt and uh, loose particles and stuff. And then I'm gonna dry it, wipe it off with acetone. And I'm gonna put on my mask and my gloves, and then I'm gonna mix some uh, polyester resin that's right now is on, on heat. They are I'm warming it up so it will be good to work with. The mask, because when I work with when I work with epoxy, I'm not using the mask because my epoxy is, doesn't have any uh, fumes or and they don't have any toxic um, fumes coming out of it. But actually Polyester resin is a different thing. They are the kind of strong things you need to have a mask when you work with, the, with polyester. I know people have commented to me and said you should use a mask even when you work with epoxy, but because epoxy doesn't have the, the same kind of things in it that the uh, polyester has, uh, I'm actually not using it then. But whenever I'm sanding, especially if I'm sanding epoxy that is uh, not really cured. I mean the cure process for epoxy is usually somewhere between a week and a couple of weeks and if I, I if it's if I'm closer than a couple of weeks I mean if I did some epoxy work if, if I 
use some epoxy and then it goes two, three, four, five weeks, then I'm, I'm not using gloves or, or mask usually, depends on if I'm in here, I might be anyway because I, I don't want to breathe in the, the particles, but it's not toxic in that way. But you want to make sure that if, if the epoxy is, is not cured out, you, you want to have gloves, you want to have uh, mask, you want to have everything to protect yourself because epoxy is highly allergic. You can get rea reactions if you get it on your skin and stuff and you, will, you might not even ever be able to work with epoxy again after that. Let's start to dry off the surfaces with a tack rag. So what I have here is regular, regular polyester resin. Uh, I'm actually using a brand, pretty cheap one from one of the stores here in Sweden. They say you're gonna sh you have to shake them pretty good before you give them a good shake before you use them. Uh, mix them with 2%. They say that for every one deciliter of polyester you need 2 milliliter hardener. So I'm gonna first batch, I'm gonna mix up about one deciliter and see how, how much I need and then for that I need 2 milliliters. I, actually pretty easy for me to mix up in these bowls. I have a, you can see one deciliter here, 100 milliliters, and then I have a two milliliter uh, syringe. If I want to mix smaller batches, I have a, a 20 millimeter syringe too. Uh, what I'm going to do here is, uh, I'm going to start out with one deciliter. I might need two or more, but, and then I'm going to brush it on because if it was bigger surfaces, I would use a, a roller. So it's another day. Uh, I was at work yesterday, so I didn't have time to uh, film or do any work on the radio stand. 
Uh, I'm an ambulance nurse here in Sweden. Today I'm going to remove the clamps from the razor of the radar stand and see if it sits together as, uh, as I am expecting it to do. Uh, I'm going to sand it off a bit. There is some r resin on the outside that came out when I put them together and clamped them together. Yeah, and as you can see, it seems to sit stick together as it's supposed to, so I'm just gonna sand it off and then I'm gonna put it away for now because uh, there are some more parts. I actually got myself a uh, 40 millimeter uh, wood staff that I'm gonna cu cut in the middle part and then I'm gonna put one half on this side and one half on the other side and then to cut out some slots and stuff for. for uh, uh, the top light and the radar shelf and stuff like that. So since this resin isn't really cured yet, I'm pretty. Uh, I'm using gloves and I'm using my mask when I'm sanding, even though I have the vacuum cleaner connected to the sander. So I'm pretty set up. I have my acetone, I got my uh, wipes, I got my pieces that I'm gonna laminate. I have resin, rollers, blenders, cup, everything around here. So I'm gonna put on my mask. Uh, as I said earlier, I don't wanna uh, breathe in this stuff in here in this uh, room because it's too enclosed here and I don't have that super good ventilation. So, uh, talk to you in a bit.
So just a final fast update. Uh, it's laminated right now. Uh, gonna cure to tomorrow, and then kind of come back in here and uh, sand it, and trim off the edges, and then put a, a, a new layer or two on the edges. For right now, I'm gonna wanna get out of here pretty fast because the smell is just awful and gets to my head directly. So I'm gonna cut the movie here. It's late Friday night. I'm sitting here doing my editing for tomorrow's movie. At the same time, I'm looking at a autopilot I'm planning to get for Macrill. Reason to why I show up here again, what is that I'm did promise you all to show you a lot of what's going to come in next year, 2020, in this movie. But when I'm sitting here editing, I realized that this episode is going to be very, very long. And that's way too long. So I'm actually going to break this up in two movies. And one's coming out Saturday morning. And I have a surprise for you all. There will be a movie on... New Year's Eve. Yeah, 31st of December, there's gonna be another episode where you're gonna see the rest of the stuff that I was planning on having in this movie. And I will also tell you a lot more about what's coming up next year. But I'm gonna give you a few hints. Uh, right now, you can see some of the stuff that's going to show up. And um, I really hope that you are interested in seeing all this and therefore uh, hitting the subscription button and the little notification bell so you don't miss out on all this funny nice cool stuff that's coming to show up on Macrill during 2020 so take care see you new year's eve bye